I realized some of y'all was hoping for like a 57 Chevy or something when I made that video this morning about going to buy a car with fins on it. But a 57 Chevy would cost about, oh, 10 times what I paid for this. And you know, back when I was a kid, I drove, we had these old Chryslers. We drove the daylights out of them and they, they did good. They, they were good cars. They didn't get a lot of, they didn't get as much well, they didn't get as much love as them Chevys. You know, every, everybody, they bought a lot of them Chevys and people hot rodded them. Of course, all the Chevy parts are interchangeable, so it's really easy to hot rod. But these big old luxury cars here, they, they went down the road like a champ. They really did. I wonder if I could get from inside here and pull that down out. Looks like I could get in here. Nope, can't get in there. So. Oh, the other thing I got to do is get that window working. The window on this side, he said if you wiggle around that switch, it'll work. Honey Baby tried the one on the other side and it worked fine. So the back one does have roller cranks on them, which is kind of interesting. But anyway, okay, we've been on the road all day. Honey Baby's about bushed. And so, and uh, tomorrow I'll clean this up and might swap the tires out, get it up on the lift, look at all the front end parts. I want to see if I see anything up under there that needs to be addressed as far as. You know, tie rod ends and oh, my door sticking again. Out in there so often. I look at the tie rod ends and the uh, drag links and the ball joints and all that fun stuff. I think I'd left a big long screwdriver over here to pop that door back in place with. Every so often that little roller pops off. And uh, I got this big long screwdriver right here and I can just about reach up here and get behind it and pop it out. Just like that. See, it's kind of floating. It don't fit down in that. It don't fit down in there like it ought to. But as long as it don't get behind that door, see, it's right in the track. It's right in the track there now. So, all life is good again. Okay. Okay. I might make some videos too if Honey Baby's too tired to play yet. Let's see. Uh, what was I saying about Betsy? Uh, Betsy's still for sale. I had a guy that said he was going to buy it, sight unseen. He made me an offer. He said he'd show up and play cash. No dickering, no fuss, no mess. I said, okay. Well, the next day he wrote me and said, well, I don't know. I need to come look at it. And I got concerns about this and that. And I said, so basically you lied to me when you said you'll give me X numbers of dollars and you'll come get it with a trailer and no fuss and no dickering and no nothing else. And, and he didn't say nothing. So I said, forget it, not for sale to you any longer. So I'm done with him. I don't like people messing around with me like that. I had another guy call from California. He runs an antique camper res restoration place out there. He wanted it to pull some of his old antique camper trailers, which I think it'd be ideal for. But he kind of backed out too. He was a little concerned about, you know, the cost of shipping and everything. Then I had a guy from England that got in touch. He was interested in buying it. I ain't heard back from him. And I don't, you know, I, I ain't like, it's not like if I don't sell that, the world's gonna end or anything. Uh, that's a good car. If it sat, sits around here and I keep messing with it, it's just gonna get better and better. And at some point when somebody's ready for it, they'll come along and buy it. In the meantime, we ride around in this big baby. <gasps> oh, oh, the joy. Hmm.